1997, Town of Cape Elizabeth Planning Board meeting. Um, first item on the agenda is the minutes from the last meeting. Are there any corrections or comments from any of the board members? If not, do I hear a motion? Mr. Wilcox? I have, I have one, one question, and that had to do with the uh, paragraph at the bottom of the first page, beginning with Mr. Wilcox. The second center sentence says, Ms. O'Meara said that the width would be dropped down to 20 feet of the road, and that the site, and, site distance and alignment would be also reduced somewhat. Which, which implies that it is a, a given that this will happen, and I believe the conversation was more in the context of those things could could be done, and I thought we might refer that back to Maureen. That's correct. So I, I would suggest changing those two woulds in that next to the last paragraph to, to coulds. <coughs> Any other comments or corrections? I hear a motion. Move that they be approved as amended. I hear a second. Second. All those in favor, please raise your right hand. Unanimous. <clears throat> um, correspondence this evening. Letter from Ram. Uh, excuse me. Letter from Ram Trust Services regarding Monk's utility extension. Fort Williams zoning ordinance amendments. Planning board draft zoning ordinance recommendation. Letter from Mr. and Mrs. Smith regarding Rosewood 2. Memorandum from town manager regarding emergency ordinance. Memorandum from fire chief regarding Connor Lane. Memorandum from code enforcement administrator regarding Connor Lane. Letter from C. Vaniotis regarding Connor Lane. Letter from Mr. and Mrs. Snow regarding Connor Lane. In report of planning board activity in 1996. Next item on the agenda, <clears throat> under other business, is election of officers for 1997. Um, last year at this time, I wasn't uh, paying attention to how this was handled, so I'm not quite sure how to handle it. But <laughs> they would have any nominations for um, for chair. <laughs> okay. uh, Mr. Wilcox. Mr. Chair, in recognition of her very able service and abilities, I would uh, like to nominate Janet McKay for chair to replace yourself. Thank you. Do I hear we can to second this? I'll second that, Chair. Okay. Well, we, we've done it regardless we need it or not. Um, do we vote on each office as it comes along? Okay. Uh, all those in favor of Ms. McKay as planning board chair, please raise your right hand. Unanimous. Congratulations. Um, next is nominations for vice chair. Mr. Okay. Parker, so I'd like to nominate uh, Mr. Wilcox for vice chair. We have a second on that. I'll second that motion. Great. Um, all those in favor, please raise your right hand. Thank you. Congratulations to you. With that, we'll play musical chairs for a second. Thank you. <clears throat> Perspective over here. Congratulations. <clears throat> One thing I've been looking forward to. Would you like the car for books? No. Okay. Well, this really is not exactly on the agenda, but I really, my first order of business, I want to uh, say that I truly have enjoyed serving uh, on the planning board under the chairmanship of uh, Steve Parkhurst, and I hope that I can uh, carry on his uh, standard of professionalism and really conscientiousness and attention to detail. Thank you very much, Steve, for Thank your you. service in the past year. The next order of business is the consent agenda, the library and entrance edition request by the town of Cape Elizabeth for approval of an entrance edition to the Thomas Memorial Library. 
section 19-2-10 site plan review um, the suggestion is that this be placed on the consent agenda shall we hear from the town planner or is there any need to do so the consent agenda is an opportunity for the board to approve minor amendments to previously approved site plans. The uh, library is being the front entrance of the library is proposed to be reorganized slightly so that the circulation desk can be right inside the doors and a vestibule is being built, I believe, with a footprint exceeding the current uh, structure of approximately 72 feet. Are there any questions? We did have materials in our packets that uh, describe this addition. And if any board member has any questions about it whatsoever, it certainly can be placed on the regular uh, agenda as opposed to the consent agenda. So I would ask if anyone uh, has any interest at all in, in uh, placing it on the regular agenda. Seeing none, hearing none, do I hear a motion? <coughs> Mr. Parkhurst. Motion for the board to consider, be it ordered that the consent agenda be approved. Second. Second. Thank you, Mr. Wilcox. Any discussion? All in favor of uh, the motion that the consent agenda be approved, raise your right hand. Unanimous. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming, Mr. Howe and uh, the librarian, but I don't think we'll need to hear from you. <laughs> the next item on the agenda is the Hunter Lane Public Access Waiver, a request by the RAG Monks Trust for a public access waiver to create a lot from lot U14-26 on Hunter Lane, section 19-4-2B, public access waiver. Would you like to uh, introduce yourself and briefly describe the project? Yes, I would. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, my name is Rick Light, and I'm a director of the firm with Land Use Consultants in Portland. And uh, with me tonight with the project team is Chris Van Eotis of Bernstein, Schur, Sawyer, and Nelson, and Tom Riddle of the RAG Monks Trust. Um, what I thought I would do is, is essentially the, the application pretty well describes, I think, what our intent is. I thought I would just take a moment uh, to give an overview of, of what we're attempting to do tonight um, and what we're requesting and uh, open, uh, open it up to uh, board comments. Um, essentially, the, the applicant for the project is the RAG Monks Trust. And, and very simply put, what we're trying to do is, is create a division of land along a private way, uh, Connor Lane, which is located off the end of Hannaford Cove Road. Um, Mr. Light, would, I think it might help if you could um, raise that and stick it on the board back here. It would be easier for people to back up here. see. Uh, back easier? That would be easier, or even sure. back on the, um, the board behind if, uh, if we can do that. Will the push pins hold something that thick? Thank you very much. Is that better? Yes. Okay. Um, the, the project, again, I think the reason we're here is simply put, we're looking for a public access waiver, uh, requesting it on the basis of being, one, a, a lot that is on a private way, which is kind of lane, and number two, uh, we are breaking a, a single lot into two lots, one lot which will have reduced furniture, which is less than 200 feet, which is the minimum. And, and just maybe I'll take a second to go quickly over where the project is and describe what's there now and then express what we, the waivers that we're looking for and why we think they meet the standards. Um, in particular, this is the end of Hanford Cove Road, the same portion of the road right now, it's Davis Cove. And this, this color here is the beginning of what they call Hunter Lane, which is about a 10 to 12 foot wide gravel, unimproved uh, private roadway, which is located in and out of a 20-foot-wide 
you've seen it planned uh, better than you can up here, 20 foot wide right of way. And the, the public portion of the roadway is ends at Hanford Cove Road, which is grown up here. The property we're looking at is a 7.6 acre piece of land, which is known more uh, locally as the, the Venerable Hunter Association Repeller Club, which is this building right up here. And currently the entire 7.6 acre property, uh, for reference to two lights towers, the east tower is right about here, if you look at the plan. This is the dwelling that's being occupied right now is a single family residence. And there's now a parcel studio and a shed on the property. Uh, what we're looking to do is, is with, a, with a lot of this nature, and market being what it is, is we're looking to divide and create a second lot, uh, which we're gonna call lot two. Lot one would remain with, with 5.2 acres of land, lot two with 2.4 acres of land. What happens when we create this lot here is of course looking at the public access way where we ask ourselves, do we or don't we meet the standards and then let's take a look internally as a project team on how we meet those standards. I think we can try to describe those in the application and going through the standards there are several <coughs> things that we wanted to bring to the board's attention. One is being on a, on a narrow way like this, one of the first concerns we had was in terms of meeting the standards is can we make fire access? Can we get the vehicles of the chief's vehicles on the roadway? Uh, we met with the fire chief early on in the project and uh, uh, in doing so, it was determined that, at that time that we might need to create a easement on the corner of this, this tight corner in here. Again, the roadway again is, is basically you know, 10 to 12 foot of gravel, not very wide, but it certainly is adequate has been used adequately for years and years by the uh, by residents. And so the plan depicted in front of you shows uh, the intention of creating a small easement here, which would allow for emergency vehicles and, and, and a, basically a widening of the road by about seven feet. In your package, uh, you'll find a letter, I believe, from the chief that we were copied onto, which upon further review, he actually took his truck out to the site and determined that he doesn't need additional width of roadway, that the existing width is adequate for the emergency vehicles. So one of the things I'd like to point out right in front is that although we've shown this on the plan, uh, unless the board has it, it differs in, uh, from the chief, we would just as well remove that uh, as a condition of the plan or um, as need be. The, uh, the lots that we're showing here, uh, for point of reference, be the furniture of the roadway begins at about this point here. This, of course, is the ocean. A beautiful, broad you know, point of ledge and rock out here from the existing dwelling. And the furniture of the roadway is measured. It's about 423 feet, more or less, along Hunter Lane. We certainly have adequate furniture for two lots. Um, if we were to simply draw a lot line down between these two lots, necessitating a public access waiver only by need of being in a private way. However, from a planning standpoint, we've taken a look at the land out here. And again, it's a sizable piece of land. Um, the abutting lots in this neighborhood, as many of you are probably well aware, are smaller uh, acre-style lots, uh, where the current zoning, of course, is two acres. And we felt that it was prudent and, and wise from a planning standpoint. It, it, it's just, the, simply put, it's the best place to put a building window would be in this area of open field of, of, on the site here. There are uh, several photographs in your application that show both Hunter Lane and also I think a view along Hunter Lane looking at this part of the property. You get sort of a feel of how a house might sit. So we thought it was important in devising this plan to create a building window that, that suited the lot, so to speak. And in, that, in doing that, we decided that it simply made sense because it was allowable under the original public land to reduce the frontage on this lot to 121 feet more or less and put the remainder of the frontage in the second lot simply because to artificially create a lot line simply to meet performance standards of frontage it simply uh, wouldn't have created an irregular lot, so to speak. Um, we, in the application, I think we've shown that we have right title our interests. We have the subject deed for the property and some background and additional information from Chris Van Yotis regarding the right title interest. In that um, an issue, potential issue, we, we feel that we certainly do have rights to use Hunter Lane as stated in the master deed and therefore meet the right title or interest for the public access waiver. <coughs> um, several waivers that we are looking for specifically in order to grant the public access waiver in the ordinance would be, again, the lot term, which is section 19.31 on lot one from 200 feet to roughly 121 feet. Uh, the second is the ordinance and the provisions of the public access waiver would require a 30 foot minimum right of way. Uh, Cunner Lane, again, is only a 20 foot right of way. Uh, the third waiver would be uh, under section 19.4.2, the uh, public access waiver provisions. 
to be that of pavement width. Again, first of all, this is not a paved road, but an underground road uh, used by the abutting residences, and its current width is only uh, 10 to 12 feet, uh, a little wider in areas down through here. For the sake of discussion, it's uh, the ordinance requires a minimum of 22 feet under the public access waiver provisions, and we are, uh, again, looking for a waiver down to 12 foot, uh, 12 foot uh, width. And I want to stop there for a second, I think the question becomes, should we improve the roadway? I think we, we took a good hard look at, it. first of all, is there a need to widen the roadway simply to meet the standard? And we, we gave it the self, give ourselves the test and said, no, there really isn't a need to widen the roadway for several reasons. One is the ordinance clearly looks for uh, uh, some compromise on, on standards in terms of where, where we need to widen roads and have wider standards. I think that as we read the new ordinances, the subdivision standards are clearly looking to use reduced road width for necessary. And, and in this case, uh, we feel that there's no, there'll be no overburdening of that roadway by simply adding a second lot. When you've got uh, several just additional dwellings already on that road, it is to widen the roadway beyond what's there now. Um, it would also reduce the rural character. This is a scenic area. It's, it's, it just would diminish from the character of that neighborhood. It wouldn't serve any real purpose. Uh, again, we, we felt we met the test of, of can we get the fire vehicles down the road? I think we've met that test with the, with the chief's letter. So for that reason, we would like to, to reduce the width to 12 feet or keep it the existing width. Uh, another waiver that's required under 1942 is, is having a pavement 50 feet from, excuse me, the, the access 50 feet from the end of the pavement. Again, the nearest edge of pavement, again, is Hanford Cove Road, which is technically, this point here, the edge of property is, is probably about 400 feet, and the middle of the lot is 500 feet in here. So we would request that uh, we not be required to pay for the 50 feet the street. And on, on a marginal level, uh, there's a requirement in your ordinance for the driveway, which we've shown here, <laughs> to have maintain a 2% or less slope the first 50 feet. And at this point, uh, if we're going to ask for waivers, it may be up to the board's discretion whether or not we need to ask for a waiver of this. The slope here is about 4%. Again, very gentle, very adequate for a driveway, but technically in its own merits, um, if we have to meet the performance standards, we may look to the board to uh, ease that requirement to a two up from 2% to 4% along the beginning of the driveway. Which brings me to the whole driveway, from the driveway issues we on the plan here. We have shown an easement here that complies with the town subdivision standards for a turnaround easement uh, in, in respect of the 40 by 50 foot size easement. And within the easement on sheet two of your drawings, what we're intending to do here is understanding the need for the fire truck to turn around or emergency vehicle to turn around. There currently is real no defined end of roadway at Connor Lane. Again, you have a gravel way that turns into a, the driveway in the existing uh, residence here. And the gravel lane just sort of peters out and turns into a footpath actually up uh, Sunrise Drive here, which is not, this is not an improved roadway. It's simply a, a walking path at this point. And to add a, a, a large uh, turnaround gravel area there, would, would, again, would attract it. It would serve no purpose in terms of the aesthetics. So what we thought would be a fair compromise that's shown in sheet two of the drawings would be to provide a 12 foot wide uh, driveway, however, allowing for a 24, full 24 foot wide gravel base with a loam and seed around the edges of the driveway here. And that, again, that's detailed on sheet two of the drawings. And that, the dimensions of that meet the standards of the subdivision ordinance for uh, the town's turnaround. Um, the property, uh, and again, shown in the application, the property here, is, is already is currently serviced by underground electric uh, a septic system and well. The new property would be serviced by a septic system in here. We've shown adequate testing and have completed an HHE 200, which is included in your application. Uh, we propose a well somewhere on this side of the property to meet our setback distances. And again, you can see the building is still a very, very broad and very, uh, very uh, wide building envelope at this part of the property for the adequate siting of the house. There's a lot of opportunities to site a house very sensitively, rather than being confined to some very small building window. But I think on the whole, that more or less sums up our application. Um, again, our additional request for waivers. Um, at this point, if the board has any questions, we're here to answer those. Or if anyone in our team has anything to add, we'd be happy to do so. Thank you, Mr. Lighton. Any questions from board members? Okay. 
Um, I have one question, Mr. Light, and that is just a, a general one on the turnaround itself. Uh, to whom would the easement be granted? This easement here could be granted to the town of Cape Elizabeth or uh, the association. I, I assume at this point it would just be granted to the town of Cape Elizabeth or simply allowed as a deed, a deed restriction that would allow that to be not be unencumbered and should to be maintained as a deed restriction um, in, in perpetuity to the design standards from the plan. Just make one comment. Thank you, <clears throat> Madam Chairman. Chris Vaniotis, uh, legal counsel for the applicant. I don't think we would actually create an easement there. I think it would be a condition on the plan that that turnaround be created in that condition and forever kept there. Because it's not clear who, I, I'm not sure the town would want an easement because it's not on a town road. I think by showing it on the plan as a condition of approval, that would ensure that it's left as a, as a turnaround uh, to, meet the, to meet the fire department's requirements too. Thank you. Madam Chief. Yes, Mr. Cotter. I have a question concerning the sight lines uh, for the home on the opposite side of Connell Lane in regards to any new buildings that would be built on a proposed lot. I'm sorry, the sight lines from, from these? Yes. Across mm -hmm. the property. Would you be impeding them with a new home being built in that envelope? Uh, most certainly. I, have to, I mean, to put a house anywhere in this building window, with the, there, there are undeniably very broad views from the residences across the street. Um, we again, we've taken a sensitive look at this lot, understanding the issues of, 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 of abutting views, and trying to be sensitive to it. And there's two things that are going on here. One, these buildings are elevated, uh, eight, six, eight feet above current grade. Again, to put a house anywhere in this building envelope, you are ultimately going to impact anybody's views in the street or from across here. It's just, it's just undeniable. In fact, the matter is, we think that though with this type of a building envelope, you could still put in a, a sizable dwelling. And I've stood out here and looked at this. And I think or to do the same themselves to form their own opinions and still have a very, very adequate and very desirable view of the cove and across the, the harbor there. Um, but to simply to stand here and state that we wouldn't have any impact on the butter views would be a misnomer. Of course, we'd have some impact. But we think that, that in the full use of the property, given the size of this lot, again, being two and a half acres roughly, uh, 2.4 acres, and the size of the adjacent lots, the density over here, the density on these two lots is far less than the density of the adjacent lots. Therefore, offers still quite a view between the dwellings and between the houses, no matter where you decide to go. Thank you. Yes, Mr. Carlson. Has the applicant given any thought to putting a restriction on the height of any building that might be built on that plot as far as when it's passed on? <clears throat> No, we haven't. We would propose that simply the standards of the ordinance and the, the, the code uh, be met when the, a building application is pulled for that lot. And the code is 35? 35, 35, 35 feet, I believe. No? Mm -hmm. The current code has no building type restriction in our district. The restriction comes from the building code, which limits wood frame structures to 35 feet. If you incorporate steel, you could go beyond 35 feet. The proposed zoning ordinance does have a limit of 35 feet in the RA district. Thank you. Any further <coughs> discussion by board members? <coughs> well, one quick. Yes, Mr. Parker. Uh, would the applicant be willing to voluntarily limit the uh, height restriction to 35 feet? given the fact that the new uh, zoning ordinance has not been enacted yet? I'll, I'll step up to the plate for that, uh, Mr. Parkhurst. I, I, I see Mr. Riddle, who's a representative of the Monk's Trust, nodding his head yes. Uh, in addition, I suspect that your new zoning ordinance is likely to be in place before anybody actually buys this lot and pulls a building permit for it. But if Mr. Riddle says yes, we could live with that as a restriction on the public access waiver would be willing to do that. Great, thank you. Thank you. Has the town planner received any indication of uh, any interest in having a public hearing on this? A lot of interest in having a public hearing. Uh, one one uh, butter uh, called and uh, said she was gonna be out of town, but uh, verbally instructed me to say that she would very much like to have a public hearing so that she could speak. And I believe there are other people who are also interested in speaking. What are people's brothers about uh, 
scheduling a public hearing. I think it's the board's policy <coughs> that normally if we know that there is an indication of, of interest, our intent is to try to receive comments from the public unless there's a, there would be no reason to do so because nobody's interested. So um, it sounds to me like we have sufficient showing of interest to provide for a public hearing. Any further questions from the board members at this time? Do I hear a motion? Mr. Parker. <clears throat> a motion for the board to consider. Be it ordered that based on the plans, materials submitted, and the facts presented, the application of RAG Monk's Trust for a public access waiver for lot U14-26 be tabled to the regular February 18th, 1997 planning board meeting at which time a public hearing shall be held. Is there a second? Mm -hmm. Mr. Carson. Further discussion? All in favor of tabling the motion, uh, of, of uh, passing the motion to table and uh, schedule a public hearing for the next meeting? Raise your right hand. Unanimous. Thank you very much. See you next month. schedule this, this is uh, nice the next item of business is zoning ordinance amendments to the wetland regulations request by the town council for a recommendation <coughs> on proposed revisions to the wetland regulations which allow more activities in the rp1 critical wetland buffer section 19-4-9 amendments to the zoning ordinance and public hearing <laughs> okay Before you are a series of amendments that were initiated by the Ordinance Committee and discussed by the Planning Board at, I, I believe, two workshops. The draft you have in front of you is supposed to reflect the changes you requested based at the last workshop, and I can go through each one of them. Um, I do want to note that under the, um, the zoning amendments, the Board has the option but is not required to hold a public hearing. Um, in conversation with the former Planning Board Chair, uh, we agreed that we would and we would provide the legal notice for tonight's meeting so the board could hold a public hearing. Therefore, you could be able to expedite this tonight if that was your desire. Is there any desire in anyone for me to either go through these, descript these changes one by one or I can just answer any questions? I think we've gone through it uh, quite thoroughly in workshops, so my sense would not be to have Ms. Elmira go through it bit by bit. Has anybody got any comments to the uh, draft dated January the 10th, 97 that was in your packet? I had two very, very, very minor points, uh, which I'm sure can be answered very quickly, and that is on page two of the draft. Um, Line 34, see Appendix D for illustration. Do we want to put a period after that, or is that sort of hanging there? For, okay. And I just want to make very sure that in line 38, when we say in the case of an existing main building, that we are talking about a main building and not a structure. Main building is a defined term in the ordinance. That was the extent of my comments. Hearing no other comments, anybody got any? If not, I'll be. Um... <clears throat> Do we have to officially open and close the public hearing, even though there's no one here? Uh, actually, we have to decide whether we want a public okay. hearing or not. I uh, take note for the record that there literally is uh, no one in the room except for the uh, people on this side of the <laughs> podium. So it doesn't appear that there's an overwhelming uh, interest in having a public hearing. Anybody need one on this side? No. Okay, thank you for bringing that to my attention. Uh, 
If there's no need for a public hearing and hearing no further comments, do I hear a motion from a board member? Mr. Parker. Motion for the board to consider. <clears throat> Be it ordered that based on amend based on amendment amendments submitted and the facts presented, the proposed wetlands regulation amendments to this wording is very let's clean do you want to clean it up? Okay, um, be it ordered that based on the amendment submitted and the facts presented, the proposed wetlands regulations amendments to the zoning ordinance sections 19-2-8-02, 19-3-9-06, and 19-3-9-12, and the zoning map be recommended to the town council for adoption. Do I hear a second? Second. Mr. Cotter? Further discussion? All in favor of the motion, set, raise your right hand. Unanimous. That's it. Having no further business to come before the meeting, uh, will I hear a motion for adjournment? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Thank you very much. We'll be